Let me tell you a little bit about my, my musical background. Uh, I was born in Acton in London. My mother and father were in the Independent Labour Party and they didn't believe in love. They regarded that as petty bourgeois nonsense. They were comrades, that was enough. Well, I was barely a few weeks old and they decided it wasn't enough at all. And so they parted. My mother went back to her mother in Whitley Bay in Northumberland, uh, taking me with her, of course, and that's where I learned to speak. And I used to speak Geordie. My Geordie friends think I'm a traitor because I don't speak with a Geordie accent any longer. And we used to gather around the piano on a Sunday afternoon saying, Oh, me lads, you should have seen us cannon passing along the hook the Scots were good lads, sir, just as they were standing. There were lots and lads and lasses there, all with smiling faces. I'm trying to do a North Ordinary accent. I'm not doing it very well. Passing along the Scots were good to see the bleeding races. Now, I went to school, four and a half to five years old, with my big sister. And she used to play games with her, her, her um, you know, the other girls of her age. And they were playing a game to a song. You know, because lots of children's games have, have songs and tunes. And this was a very strange thing. It's stuck in my mind ever since. Have you seen out a my bonny lad? And are you sure he's wheel oh, He's can know a land with his stick in his hand. He's can to moor the keel, oh. Yes, I've seen the bonny lad, t'was on the sea I spied him. His grave was clean, but not with the grass. I can do that. <laughs> Look, the Geordie R. His grave is clean, but not with the grass. I'll never lie aside him. Two verses. It's, it's like, it's like a huge drama. This woman, where's my... Have you seen my, my boyfriend? Yeah, I saw him sailing on the ocean, but he's drowned now. Bang, end of story. <laughs> Incredible. But of course, I, I never thought about it like that. It was a game. And of course, girls' games were soppy. So I paid no attention to that until I heard Catherine Perrier singing, Have you seen how to marble lad? I love Kathleen Perrier, but she, she shouldn't sing my song. She should stick to Mahler and Kinder Tote and Lieder and things like that. And so I thought, she's singing my bloody song. And so I, I, I looked it up. My mother went to a grammar school in Newcastle, and um, her teacher was W. w Gillies Whitaker, who was a collector, a folk song collector. I didn't know anything about this until long after. When she died, she bequeathed me her songbooks, and there was uh, folk songs of, of, of the North East, collected by W. Gillis Whitaker, which was her school book. Um, and he collected all these songs. And one of the songs uh, was called Chevy Chase. And you know, when you go to a folk song club, and you want to sing, as I say, singing from the floor, they've got a guest booked. And they say, you know, well, somebody can sing a song at, at the very beginning. So. If, when they say, can you just do one song? Chevy Chase has got 256 verses. <laughs> and I feel tempted uh, to do it, but I, I don't. Uh, largely because I can't remember them all. But there was, there, was, there was one verse which my Auntie Bessie, who I stayed with at the outbreak of the war, uh, she did some research into the origins of her family, my family, and uh, it says... Uh, now we sing of Sir Thomas Widrington, and we sing with doleful dumps, for when his, both his legs were cut off, he fought on on his stumps. And uh, that was the Battle of Otterburn, which was a battle between the Scots uh, and, and, and the Northumbrians, um, along the line of Hadrian's Wall, the Roman Wall. And so I knew nothing about folk songs. Well, I had a teacher... Uh, who used to stand on a table. I went to the village school. It was a real culture shock because all these tough village farm labourer boys, you know, and that's where I learnt about sex in all sorts of weird ways. <laughs> um, 
And she used to stand on a table and sing us folk songs, uh, as they were called, you know. And they were really sloppy, but all the boys, including me, trying to look up her skirt. That was what that, the songs meant to us at that time. But anyway, um, 1937, Chamberlain came, 1938, I beg your pardon, came back from meeting Hitler, waving a piece of paper, peace in our time. And uh, we demonstrated against appeasement. And as man is only human, he must eat before he can drink. Pine words are only empty air and not his meat and drink. Then left, right, left, then left, right, left, there's a place, comrade, for you. March with us in the Workers' United Front, for I, you are a worker too. Now that is, that song was already out of date when we were singing it, oh, I found the words. Because there's another verse which I don't know by heart, which I didn't sing at the time. But I love it because it's, it's like marks set into four lines. Uh, And since a worker's a worker, no class can free us but our own. The emancipation of the working class is the task of the workers alone. Then left, right, left, and left, right, left, there's a place, comrade, for you. Walk with us, march with us in the workers' united front, for you are a worker too. Now that's Brecht's Einheit's Fontslied the United Front song. Uh, but then the policy of the common turn changed. Before I was singing this song, I was already out of date because the policy became the popular front. So instead of saying the bourgeoisie were the enemy, with the attack of fascism upon the democratic state, the bourgeois democratic state, if you like, we needed to all unite against fascism. And so we weren't it wasn't a question of you are a worker too because the bourgeoisie had to join our struggle as well and there were popular front uh, governments elected in, in, in France and of course in Spain and that's what Franco revolted against 